information process collecting so in this video we are going to take a look at collecting which is considered the first information process as it's all about us getting data and putting it into the system so let's define that and get it on screen so what is the definition of this information process well it is the gathering collecting of data and then its entry of this data into an information system so it's a two-fold process it's how we get the data and then how we enter into the information system so firstly we're going to take a look at methods which can be used to firstly obtain this data so the first one is an interview and this is usually where there's an interviewer and an interviewee and the interviewer will ask the interviewee a number of questions in order to gain data in a face-to-face -face format or these days it can also take place over video conferencing Next we have surveys, okay, and this is usually a series of questions that are given out to individuals for them to fill out and based on their responses, that's how we gain the data. And so we have to be very careful with these, how we write these questions so that they're easy to understand for the recipients and so that we do get meaningful data back. Third, we have research, and this is when we look into other people's information and use it as our data. So it could be from authors in a specific field, or it might be us observing a system in action, and from this experience and reading and gaining knowledge, okay, we obtain data to use in our system. Third, we have forms and questionnaires, and these can be online in most cases. And online forms have text boxes, which our recipients can fill in. And often in online forms, that data is then sent directly to a database, which can be a part of our information system going straight into our system. Third, we have manual event recording. This is at the time of a specific event when we are actually observing something, we actually document what's going on. Okay, so once again, it could be a meeting like a WHS meeting. And as the meeting is taking place, we are writing down what people are saying at the meeting. And then we do that manually, obviously, because we're writing it down. And then we enter that into a system. And then finally, we have existing data. And this kind of takes us back to that whole relationship between data and information. Existing data could be information from another system. And then we've got to put that information as data into this information system. So what that cycle of one system's data, uh, one system's information being another system's data. Okay. So now let's take a look at the information technology that we use to do collecting. Okay. So we'll firstly start off with hardware. And just to start off, there's a whole range of hardware that is used for entering data into systems. So we're just going to touch on a few categories here. Firstly, we have, and probably one that's right in front of you, is a keyboard. And keyboards are used to manually enter text into a system. Keyboards allow us to press on symbols, and the symbols we press on the keyboard appear on screen that we are pressing. Okay. We also can have things such as keyboard overlays that can allow us to use different languages on our system, allowing us access to more characters and making more characters available for our information system. There are also digital keyboards that are built into a lot of systems, giving us more freedom with the amount of characters we have available. Next, we have cameras, okay? And these days, cameras are everywhere. We're so lucky that we have mobile phones which have cameras attached. We have our traditional um, high HD cameras that are out there. Our tablets have cameras, okay? And our computer often has web cameras. And um, so with these, these can capture both image and audio, okay? Both directly in digital format which wasn't the case in the old days. At first they were created analog pictures and film, which we then had to convert later. But now these days they are digital straight away. And because they're digital and they use digital data, we can put them directly into our system almost instantly, pending their file size. Third, we have a microphone and I'm using a microphone right now and it's obviously used to capture audio. This microphone's a part of my headset, but there are other microphones too that can be handheld. The ones that the real professional YouTubers sit on the table and are excellent at catching sound when they're in sound studios. Okay, and they allow for the capture of the media type of audio. We have scanners which can be used to transfer physical paper-based documents data and digitize it and send it into a system. We have specific can, um, scanners as well known as OCR, which is optical character recognition, which doesn't just scan the document and save it as an image, but actually tries to recognize the characters on the document and then digitize those characters so that it can enter into the system and they're immediately editable by the actual user of the information system. 
Finally, we have a mouse and pointing devices, okay? And there are a whole range of pointing devices that are available. Obviously, mouse is already listed here, which allows us to point and click on icons, okay? Which is a form of collection of data, and obviously, by doing so, executes functions. But by other pointing devices, we're talking about tablet devices, such as graphics tablets, trackballs, which are, allow us to roll a little ball around that moves a cursor on screen, okay? And these days, which are extremely popular, is the touch portion of a touch screen monitor just the touch side of it because the monitor itself is a display okay and becomes under the information process of displaying but that touch portion of a touch screen is still considered collecting under the area of pointing devices okay and the final area we're looking for information technology is the software okay and a lot of this software allows us to for our hardware or our data to interact with the system so firstly we have device drivers often when we get a new piece of hardware we have to install the driver onto our system so that the hardware can interact with our operating system so you've got to make sure that you're using the right device driver for example for your headset that is compatible with your Windows 10 operating system or your Mac OS X High Sierra operating system. They run different drivers and your piece of hardware needs to be using the correct driver to interact with the operating system software. Next we have online forms and as we said with forms and questionnaires before, these are forms that are posted often in information systems and through users and recipients filling in these forms that data is um, collected obviously and sent straight into a database within the system. We have data validation tools, which are extremely important and will come up when we discuss social and ethical issues. And validation is all about checking data at the time of collection and ensuring that it is correct. And we do this through a range of, of checks. We have a type check, which um, essentially checks the data type that is being used. So if it's expecting a number and we put text in, it's going to straight away highlight, oh, this value is not a number and it already picks up on an error. Okay, we also have a range check, which uh, has a barrier of a value values okay and if it's the number entered exists outside of those values it will realize that that value is incorrect and a whole range of other types of validation that we'll go to in a later time but essentially it checks data at the time of collection to ensure that it is correct as it is entered into a system and if it's not correct it won't let it enter the system and then finally we have import software tools so jumping back again to that existing data when we're talking about methods import software tools essentially are what allow us to get information from another system okay and then insert it as data into our information system so i hope this has given you a good introduction to the information process of collecting obviously the information processes we're going to be going much more in depth into all this stuff being that it is the name of the course okay but this is just a nice all-round introduction to the specific information process of collecting